Good morning, River of Life. I'm so excited that today we have a guest speaker, Marcus Floyd. He is a VCU graduate in kinesiology, but he's been serving with Chi Alpha as a campus missionary with RVA Chi Alpha for the last four years. And so he's been focusing his ministry attention on the campus of Virginia Union University. And I've seen Marcus as I've been back from the mission field. I've seen him at the pastor meetings and uh, he's always a very friendly young man. And uh, I, I thought, I heard he was a great preacher and I thought what a great opportunity to have him come and share uh, from the scripture as well as from his testimony because Chi Alpha had an integral part in reaching him to be used by God for the gospel. And so today we're focusing on Chi Alpha. We're focusing on how uh, Chi Alpha is reaching out to this particular community here in Richmond of students at different campuses. And so Marcus, I'm so thankful that you can be here today. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you.
Hello, River of Life family. It is so good to be with you this morning. Pastor Payne, thank you so much for that introduction. It is an honor to be here. Again, like Pastor Payne said, my name is Marcus Floyd, um, and I am a campus missionary for Richmond Chi Alpha. I was born and raised uh, right outside of Richmond, Virginia, in Chesterfield County. I've been serving in Chi Alpha for the past four years, since 2016. And I serve the students that attend Virginia Union University and students at VCU. Uh, we're all in a challenging season right now with the coronavirus uh, pandemic that's been going on across our country, but also our world. But even in this season, we have hope. We have hope because we have Jesus. Jesus is our King, He's our Savior, and He's our refuge. And this morning, I want all of us to, to rest in the fact that no matter what the circumstances may be, no matter what happens or what circumstances we might find ourselves in, our God will never fail us. He will never leave us nor forsake us as we draw close to Him because He draws close to us. So River of Life family, I wanted to spend this morning um, to share with you how Jesus transformed my life. I didn't grow up a follower of Jesus. Um, I didn't have the experience and uh, the church background growing up. Um, but based on my observations of what I heard other people saying when I saw other people do, I considered myself a Christian, thinking that to be a Christian meant being nice to people, getting good grades in school, going to college, getting married, having a family, wife, kids, and having a successful career with prestige and being a productive citizen. But as I started thinking about that over the years, I wondered, is that it? Is that all that there is to life? Is that all that there is to this life? And as I became a teenager, I uh, began to experience the difficulties uh, of life and situations um, that I wrestled with and was wrestling with my own sin. Um, I was prideful, rebellious, chasing success as if it was God, uh, seeking pleasures outside of Christ. And because of what I experienced in those difficult years, I thought God was distant and he didn't really care about me. But that he had other things to do and he had other people uh, to be with, but not me. I began to see that my view of God did not match to the reality that I was experiencing. And it didn't address the brokenness that was inside of me. So once I graduated from high school, I couldn't settle on the assumption of who Jesus is any longer. I needed to know for myself I heard people talk about God, but I wondered, what is he like? Is he kind? If I reach out to him, will he reject me? Will he only see the brokenness inside of me and cast me away? Does he see the situations that I'm in? Does he want to be with me? Maybe that's where you are today. Whether you're a follower of Jesus or uh, you're curious about Jesus. Um, maybe you're wondering, what, what, what does he think about you? What does Jesus think about you? Maybe you're in a difficult season and uh, the clarity of who Jesus is, 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 is being clouded by the situations that are happening right now in our world. Over the next couple of minutes, I want us to walk together to get clarity on who God is and who Jesus is for our life and for those that are around us. We're going to spend some time in the Bible. We're going to look at Zacchaeus' situation because Zacchaeus was in the same predicament. He had the curiosity of who Jesus is. But his curiosity led him to have an encounter with Jesus that changed his life. So let's go to Luke chapter 19, and we're going to be in verses 1 through 10. Verse 1, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus, and he was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. 
He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was so short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he's gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, today, Salvation has come to this house, because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Luke, the writer of this account, points out some important details about Zacchaeus that we want to camp out in here and look. We're told that Zacchaeus is a chief tax collector and wealthy. Uh, the tax collectors were notorious in the Jewish community at that time, considered to be sellouts to the Roman Empire. They took more than what they were supposed to, and Zacchaeus would have overseen people uh, uh, misuse and abuse their, their job uh, to make a profit in gaining taxes. Zacchaeus took part of exploiting his own community for the Roman government. Now, if Facebook was around at that time, uh, Zacchaeus nor his buddies would be getting any Facebook invitations at all. Uh, he would have been left in the dust, and for good reason. But we see in verses 3 and 4 that Zacchaeus' eagerness to see Jesus among the crowd. I think Zacchaeus was more than just a rich tax collector. I think he was much more complex than that. The writer hints that by mentioning his height and how he ran ahead of the crowd to see Jesus. I wonder if Zacchaeus held that job because of his insecurity, wanting to be significant, to be in control, to be accepted in some way, shape, or form, even if only by the Roman government. But Jesus was motivated by his perfect love to come to the sycamore tree and called Zacchaeus by name in front of everyone. The guy had a bad reputation. It was out of his love, out of Jesus' love, that he did that. Even with the power of a tax collector and wealth, Zacchaeus himself didn't think that that was enough to just hear about Jesus. Because there's a difference between hearing about Jesus and passing and experiencing his love personally. And the reality is Jesus invites us into his story through his personal invitation. Jesus invites us into his story through his personal invitation. In my story, I experienced Jesus' love personally in his invitation. So back to my story, I've never been to a church before. Growing up, I, I just didn't have that community um, experience. I would have these questions in mind. What are you supposed to wear? Oh, where, what clothes are you supposed to wear? Where are you supposed to go? What church am I supposed to go? What, what are church services like? I know worship happens, but how does that work out? And how are you supposed to read the Bible? I had a lot of questions. So I decided to download the Bible app uh, and started reading the Gospels for myself. And after reading them, I made the decision, I wanted Jesus to be Lord of my life. Jesus' declaration of who he is and the works that he did transformed my life. And I saw that how he is personal to the brokenness, to broken people, that he's personal to sinners busted up sinners like me. I thought he was distant, but he revealed to me who he is, how compassionate he is. And Jesus, I saw the heart of God for the world, but also for me personally. There was room for me at the table to be with Jesus. 
He invites us in. God revealed to me who he is through the Bible. And I chose Jesus. Jesus invites us into his story through his personal invitation. So let's continue on reading in Luke verse, chapter 19. Let's go back to verse 8. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half my possessions to the poor. And if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Man, that's, that is just radical response right there. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek to save the lost. It looks like whatever conversation Zacchaeus had with Jesus, that conversation changed Zacchaeus' heart. There was something about Jesus' presence that brought comfort to Zacchaeus, so much so that he could, he could share and have, have, have time with Jesus, this notorious tax collector, so comfortable with Jesus, even with his bad history. But Zacchaeus, I'd imagine, was so uncomfortable at the same time to where that Zacchaeus, he didn't allow uh, 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 where he was in his sin to stay there. He went beyond that. He was so uncomfortable, I'd imagine, that he was like, I, I, I want to leave this life behind. I'm going to leave this notorious life of taking advantage of people behind. And I wanted to go all in for what Jesus was about. Zacchaeus had caused so much pain in his community, but the story was changing. The story was changing because Jesus made an invitation to Zacchaeus and it changed everything for him. But the crowds were annoyed, baffled. I just imagined them saying, Jesus, he's a sinner. Don't you know what he's done? Do you realize who you're hanging out with? How can this man accept him? But that's the point. Jesus called the tax collector Zacchaeus while he was in sin. Upon Jesus' invitation and acceptance, he gave Zacchaeus a new name, a new reputation, son of Abraham. A new name, a new reputation, son of Abraham. When Jesus says here in this, in this verse, uh, 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 son of man, he said that upon, upon Zacchaeus' faith, he was connected to the promise God made to Abraham all those years ago. And that's something that money, prestige, influence, or power, none of those things could buy. Zacchaeus' new identity brought worship to God that impacted others around him. So I lived this life of reading the Bible and growing more and more in my love for Jesus, but there was something missing. I was missing community. Um, I didn't have a community of followers of Jesus to help me along in my journey with Christ. And we're not meant to live our lives alone. We're not meant to be lone wolves in our walk with Jesus. It was complicated for me because I uh, was afraid of what it would look like to get plugged into a uh, uh, community that followed Jesus, to get involved in church community, to get involved in a campus ministry on campus. I had all of these fears about what that would look like. But looking back, I see that that was the best decision that I made. That I didn't truly understand how good Jesus' community is and how vital it was for me to walk for the long haul with Jesus, with people to my left, to my right, in front of me, behind me, walking together. I was so focused on becoming an occupational therapist after college at VCU that I was dodging all the different campus ministries. I was so preoccupied, but also I had those fears. And it wasn't until my 
sophomore year in the spring semester that I was walking through the main part of campus at VCU running like the physiology lab and a group of, 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 of people or on the side I could see them on on the left side of my peripheral vision and it was Chi Alpha people and they were throwing frisbees and they threw me one of these frisbees and it was this one it was this exact frisbee Chi Alpha love God love people pass it on I ended up catching this frisbee from one of the people uh, that were tossing it out. And it was another six months before I followed up on that invitation from uh, people who love Jesus and Chi Alpha, because I was afraid. But when I got plugged in, I got plugged into a community that loved Jesus and that would help me grow as well for the long haul. They helped me to grow with Jesus to have devotional life with Jesus, to live life as a college student that is solely focused on giving God glory with everything he does. But I also grew in friendships with those that are around me in the Kyle Alpha community as well. Jesus changed my life. He changed my eternity. And people in Chi Alpha, they played a significant part of me wanting to what it looks like to live out a life following Jesus in community. Being involved in small group, growing in my brothers and sisters in Christ throughout those two years and worshiping Jesus with all of my life. It was amazing. And I was having a blast. Uh, but then my small group leaders informed me of this very uh, important thing that happens to college students. They were graduating. They were like, Marcus, uh, we're going to graduate. So, uh, this is happening like, no, you guys can't leave me. You guys can't go. But then I realized, oh, yeah, they, they do have to graduate. They are seniors. But they pulled me aside and said, you know, Marcus, you'd be a good small group leader. You, you'd be a really good small group leader. I'm like, oh, you guys are talking about me? Like what? Like being able to lead the charge and, and help people grow in their relationship with the Lord and, and, and really leading that? It's almost like that, that moment when like your parents give you the car keys for the first time to be able to drive the car. It's like, what? I was like, I, there's just so many things I don't know. I feel like I'm not an expert in the Bible. There's just like all these things. And I was making excuses, but in making those excuses, I ignored the things that God had done in my life all the way up to that point. And I didn't realize that God was going to equip me. That God was going to equip me as I obeyed him. And after I prayed and, and thought about it, I said yes to being a small group leader. I said yes to being a small group leader because I knew what Jesus had done in my life. And I believed I could trust him with this decision. And I did and I saw so much goodness come out of it. Um, when I was a small group leader in Chi Alpha at VCU my senior year, I saw people in my small group lives being transformed. I saw people growing in lifelong friendships. My eyes were open, my mind was expanded to what it means to live for Jesus and to have a heart for those around me in a relationship with him and to do something about it in community. Jesus invites us into his story through his personal invitation. So what was my response? And what is my response to that? God transformed my life and invited me into his story. And now the same questions I had about Jesus, brokenness, I wrestled with in and around me. I get to meet students, college students, where they're at with those same questions. And I get to make disciples who make disciples on the college campus and that will go off into the marketplace and into the world and bring forth God's kingdom. And it's of my opinion today that this world is in a desperate need of Jesus and his kingdom and his rule and his reign. But what will all of our response be in response to Jesus's invitation? What will our response be to what Christ has done in our lives? God is giving you an invitation into his story. In this season, how can you give yourself space to allow God to show his personal love and invitation to you? In the midst of COVID-19, who is around you? 
Who has God placed in your circle of influence this season? Who can you share Jesus with, not only in word, but in how you live your life? I believe that in response to Jesus' invitation, personal invitation, I believe that we can exemplify, that we can um, go out into a world that is, that is broken and to reveal who God is and that Jesus is personal, that he is near, and that he wants to transform this world and bring forth his kingdom. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for what you are doing in our lives. That, Lord, that what you're doing in this world, God, that you are personal and that you want to be in a relationship with us, God. Lord, I pray that you would help us, whether we're following you, Jesus, or have questions, that you would meet us where we are, and that you would help us to see that you want a relationship with us, and to guide us, and to lead us, and to make an impact in others' lives as well. We love you, Jesus. We thank you. Have your way in our lives. And in your name we pray. Amen.